Ryan. Hey, Ryan. All right. Hi there. Yes, you're here. Hold on, we're going to pin you because everybody wants to see you, not us. <laughs> Your Although, head is being eaten by my book. I know. Yeah. That's, that's the point. <laughs> Hilarious. Awesome. All right. So people are still joining. Uh, we had over 100 people register for this. We've got about 84 that have logged on so far. So we're awesome. going to go ahead and get started. Let's do it. First of all, um, you guys are the best. Uh, uh, I love you very much. Thank you so much for, for doing this and, uh, you know, opening us and our, our, the new book up to your entire community. Um, you guys have been awesome. Thank you. We want to get you on that New York bestseller, number one. Yes, please, please, <laughs> so I could take this off. That's yes. right. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, well, we're super excited to have a very special guest with us today. Ryan Serhant, you guys have seen Ryan on Bravo TV's Million Dollar Listing New York, his TV show, Sell It Like Serhant. He is one of the most successful and well-known real estate brokers in the world. In fact, uh, you sold- Next to uh, both of you. <laughs> we're not quite there yet, Ryan, we're, we're trying. Uh, he has sold over $4 billion in real estate in just the last couple of years. He is the founder of Serhant, his new company, He's an entrepreneur, best-selling author, social media influencer, public speaker, producer, the list goes on. And he is here with us today to talk about his new book, Big Money Energy. Guys, it's coming out February 2nd. Sydney has put the link in the chat so you can pre-order yes. the book. Do it now because we've given you a special promotion. Thank you to Ryan, 40% off the list price, but it's not gonna last but another day or two. So order it now. Ryan, welcome. Yes. <laughs> welcome. And thank yes, you yes, so, yes. so much. Um, I see you're in the car. <laughs> yes, I am in the car. Sorry. Um, I just it's coordinating and schedule and everything. It's hard between appointments. He's going to uh, a so listing appointment. No <laughs> yeah, I'm in between. Listen, I'm, I'm in between showings all the time. I was That's filming right. for uh, uh, there's a new Bravo show we're doing. So I was filming for that just before shot off a bunch of emails now i'm on the phone call with you guys i go back to film and then i have a listing appointment after that so kind of all over the place well your schedule and the way in which you put it together and everything that you've accomplished it's incredible i mean you've written two books now you've written a course for real estate agents by the way i've taken the course guys if you haven't taken sell it like serhant take the course it's amazing you run Thank an entire you. company. You're doing webinars. Uh, you're still going on appointments. You're shooting videos every week. So how do you find the motivation and energy to bring it every single day? That is a, a great question. Um, and actually, it, it, you know, that question I thought about a lot to myself when we were all quarantined. Um, you know, you guys are all down there in Texas and Houston, uh, you know, and you've got some sun. We up here last year at this time, we had to, we went up to New Hampshire and we were in the woods, in the snow, dark skies every day. And I was asking myself the same question over and over. Why, uh, why should I even have a routine now? Right. Everything is, everything's on hold. Why should just hang out? Just, just go watch TV, you know, watch Netflix. That's what everyone's doing right now. Um, and I realized that I, I don't, I don't work for the way I feel today. I work for the way I want to feel tomorrow. Um, uh, because today is fleeting, right? I want to do as much as I possibly can, but today is fleeting and you want to work for future you, you know, that's important to me. I want to make sure that Ryan tomorrow, a week from now, you know, two years, 10 years from now is living the most successful life he possibly can. And that's the person I get up and go to work for every single day. Um, and so I was in quarantine. And so I told myself, you know what, I'm going to lead my life exactly the way I would had COVID not happened and I was still in New York City. So I woke up at 4 a.m. and instead of going to a nice fancy gym like I have here in Manhattan, I was putting on three layers of sweatpants and a sweatshirt and a coat and I was running around a lake uh, in the snow, in the ice. Um, and then I started talking to so many of, I was so cold. And then I started talking to uh, so many of our course members and you know, uh, I was doing these Zooms and Wine Wednesdays and, uh, and talking to so many people who had been let go and you know, furloughed and were having a hard time due to COVID and due to the shutdowns and other salespeople where deals were dying left and right. Um, and I realized, you know what, I, I can help everybody else um, because I used to feel that way uh, before I got into real estate 
And that light bulb went off and I realized who that person is that I work for. Uh, and I kind of put that blueprint together and that's what, that's what big money energy is. So we're selling like Sirhan, which you mentioned is really my, my toolkit for the sales profession, you know, how to sell anything, but also how to build a sales career. Big money energy is that secret sauce. It is my confidence blueprint so that you can get up every day and go and work for future you. Love it. I love it. Well, that, that leads well into the next question I had. So I read your first book. I took the course. I'm sure a lot of people on this webinar have done the same. And I know that helping others to be successful or even more successful is a huge passion of yours. So you've got the book coming out now next week. Is there a plan to create a course as well, like you did with Sell It Like Sirhan? Um, yes. <laughs> we haven't made it yet. Uh, but yes. And it would be totally totally different. You know, I am uh, like, kind of like I said, Salt Lake Sirhan is very tactical. It's what to do, how to do it. Here's what you say. Here's when you say it. Um, and uh, you listen, you know, a lot of feedback that I get from my first book is this is awesome. This is great. I know exactly what to do, but I'm nervous. I know exactly what to do, but I'm too young. I know exactly what to do, but I feel uncomfortable telling people I'm a salesperson. Um, I, I, I know what I'm supposed to do in my brain, but I feel sick to my stomach. So big money energy is that specific set of qualities that super successful people have. And I think that so many of us feel like success, especially financial success, but also success in ourselves and the way we feel successful personally, which is relative for everybody. We feel like it's reserved for other people, like it's reserved for beautiful people or, you know, people born into money or people that are just super smart and well-educated, but it's not true, right? It, it, I mean, it can be for them, but it, it's possible for every single one of us, right? We just have to put our mind to it. Um, and our definition of success is different from everybody else's definition of success. And if you believe in yourself, and you understand the perception that you're putting off of yourself into the world, and you can change that as you see fit, then you can be completely free to do whatever you want to do in life. You could be whoever you want to be. Um, I mean, I was like, when I first got into this business, you know, I, again, I'm, I was born in Houston, Texas, right? I was in um, uh, cowboy boots, khaki pants, had my leather belt, nice good buckle, uh, collared shirt, walking down the streets of Manhattan because those were my nice clothes. Those were my fancy clothes. Uh, and I didn't have a suit. And I felt like I totally stuck out, which I definitely did. And meanwhile, I was 23 with a full head of gray hair. Uh, and so I think I was just this walking enigma of like this, this really tall Southern cowboy with gray hair. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, and I wanted to be a Manhattan real estate agent. Uh, and I let it really get to me. Right, it affected my self confidence. I didn't feel like I, I, I didn't feel like I, I, I fit in with everybody else in the city. Um, and I think a lot of people can probably relate to that in your own cities, your own towns, your own neighborhoods, your own networks, your own companies. Uh, and then I met a client who didn't know me and didn't know anything about New York. And that's when that that switch really happened for me, where I realized, you know what, I don't have to wait for experience to show her that I'm the best. I don't have to wait for ten years to get those 10,000 hours, you know, whatever everybody says, I can be the person I want to be right now. And I can show her that she's working with the best. I just have to look the part, walk the part, act the part, and know the part. And I have to just be prepared. And if I can be prepared with everything I need to talk about, then she'll never even ask me any questions. Um, and that, and a few other things, really helped set me up. And she never asked me any questions about my experience, how long I've been doing it. She said it was great. And she bought up an apartment. It was the first apartment I ever sold over a million dollars. Um, she bought an apartment. It was like just two point, I want to say 2.1 um, on the Upper West Side. Uh, and when she left, I was like, oh my God, it worked. I just, I, I know what to do now. I know exactly what to do. I, I believe in myself. I tell the world I believe in myself and the world will believe in me. And that's it. And that's, that's really kind of like the bare knuckles that's what goes into this um uh and really stripping it down so that everybody can feel the same way and do the same thing tomorrow is what the book is about wow so what are some of your big money energy codes you learned that can help your audience reach their goals right yeah so i have um uh that's a good question 
uh, I have the book taped to my hand. So hold on, let me just look at this. There, <laughs> there are uh, 16 codes. If, if anyone on here had gone through uh, Salt Lake Sirhan, I had um, um, my Salt Lake Sirhan secrets, which were just kind of takeaways as you're reading the book. You know, if you're a highlighter or you just want to remember specific quotes, that was it. And big money energy codes are, are similar. Um, uh, they're kind of like the codes for success, right? You remember these 16 codes and you will uh, be on the path to success. Um, the first one I think is really important. Okay, so I'm gonna read it to you. It's code number one, uh, which is when you can't change your circumstances, there's one thing you can change, your energy. And I wanted to start with that one because it's, it sounds simple, but you have no idea how important it is to have a lot of energy in any business. And that doesn't mean like drinking 10 coffees and being a total spaz, okay? That's, that's being caffeinated. Um, having high energy, right, means your eyes are open, your face is open, you're excited when people are excited, and you're sad when they're sad. You empathize with them, you can enunciate words, you can look at people in the eye, and you're enthusiastic about the day, because you guys know it's as good as anybody, right? You know, when you're selling anything, whether it's a property, a car, insurance, or yourself on a date or on a job interview, you're really selling the energy in the moment. Like I'm selling energy in this apartment and that's what people are addicted to. So if you can't change how much money you have in your wallet, you can't change who your parents are, you can't change where you live right now, you can't change your bills, you can't change your kids, right? Whatever, whatever you don't like that you can't change, you can change the fact that you can wake up with energy and go about your day as somebody who leads with that energy versus allowing the weight of the world to lead with you, right? Where you then have that kind of low energy. Um, and big money energy really is big magnetic energy, okay? It's, it's, and you can see this, anyone who's confident, anyone who's successful, they attract other confident people and other people who are successful, right? That's why you see people who are wealthy and people ask me all the time, how do you get into a luxury market? You see people who are in luxury markets, they hang out with other people who are also in luxury markets, right? Most people who have million dollar homes hang out with other people you know, who have million dollar homes because they have the same problems because they can't complain about their 19 TVs to somebody who just got their first one. It'd be weird, right? It'd make them feel, you'd be embarrassed and it's not appropriate. But to someone who has 20 TVs, yeah, I can complain to you, dude. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah, with the curved screen, you know, misery loves company at all price points. Um, uh, and so if you change your energy, you can affect your circumstances. Um, and there's a whole, you know, the book is actually broken down into three sections because I was, I was writing it. It was kind of scattered all over the place. I was like, you know what? The way I was going about it and the chapters are sectioned into how to make your life bigger, okay? how to think about how to grow your money, right? And then how to lead with energy. And so they're broken down into, into three parts. Um, um, you know, another uh, a good like little tip, right? That I use all the time, big money energy code number three uh, is fill your mind with positive thoughts for at least 10 seconds before meeting anyone. If your head's in a good place, you'll exude positivity and confidence and it'll set the tone for the meeting. Um, and people talk about this a lot, uh, but I think it's a really, really important thing to do. If you're having a tough day, a bad day, you didn't sleep well, you're stressed out, you're nervous. I, I actually, I just did this before a big listing pitch we just had for a building. There's a, a building with, um, with a hundred units in it. The sellout is $300 million. And today, this morning was really stressful and kind of running around. We had some deals falling apart. So I sat in the car and I closed my eyes for 10 seconds. And I just thought about uh, Zena trying to wear all my clothes, um, which is ridiculous because she's tiny and she's a baby and my clothes are huge because I'm a grown man. Um, and it just makes me laugh. Even now, like when I think about it, she, and she gets so angry about it that my shoes don't fit her and her feet are this big. Um, and I got out of the car and went into the meeting and I felt good, but kind of forgotten about whatever deals were dying before uh, and went into it and led with energy and led with positivity. And I think even the guy I was pitching, the developer, 
he came into that meeting. I could see that he was like, he's got a lot going on today. Now I got to go have another meeting with this other guy in this building. And I got to get it sold. Uh, and he feeds off of the positive energy that I was pushing out there. Um, and by the end of the meeting, he was laughing. He was excited. He was great. And we barely even talked about the building. Barely even talked about it. Just a little bit at the end. That's how you know when your pitch has been pretty successful. If they just fire off with, okay, why can you sell this house? How are you going to do it? Then you know that you're creating a transactional relationship where you're really just flipping a coin. You're either going to get it or you're not going to get it. But if you're coming out of it and you're like, oh, right, we should probably talk about the building and the whole reason we're here, right? You just created an actual friend. You just created a relationship, right? And that person is going to like you and they're drawn to you because you now have that magnetic personality, right? You've got that big money energy. Um, and then one more, sorry, I'm talking your ear off. Um, we, we we're here to hear from you, so just keep talking. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, there, uh, big money energy number five um, uh, is an uncomfortable one. So I, I thought I would just, I would read it. Um, insist on brutally honest feedback, demand it and appreciate how the short-term pain Will promote long-term growth in you. Uh, it's something that we try to practice as much in our office as we can um, safely. And it's something that I ask of all of my agents and all of our clients, right? If you don't like me, please tell me because most people don't know why they're failing. They honestly don't. They think it's because of this. When really, it's because of this, this, this. It could be the smallest thing ever why you didn't get that buyer to close or why you didn't get that listing pitch. And you might think it's because of your experience. You might think it's because of your face. You might think it's because of who knows, because of the company you work for when really you didn't get it because you're chronically late and you just thought it was okay. Or you have really bad breath and you didn't know it. You know, there could be, who knows, a litany of reasons. And it's important to demand honesty and demand brutal feedback because it's the only way that you can grow. Because you're either gonna live with long-term pain and then 10 years later, wonder why no one ever told you that you do that thing, or you're gonna say, okay, thanks, that stings. Uh, you're a jerk for telling me that, but I thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna take care of that right now. I had no idea that I, that I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about when I really do because I get nervous and I say, um, and like all the time. I didn't know that that was a, a vocal tick of mine. I'm gonna start working on that by talking to myself in the mirror and working with somebody that I feel really comfortable with like a spouse or a friend or a co-agent. I'm gonna start pitching them because clearly I'm searching for my words in meetings and I don't mean to be searching for my words. I just get nervous. And so that makes it seem like I don't know what I'm doing and so I don't get hired. When really, I know what I'm doing better than anybody else. I know the comps backwards, forwards, left, right, and down because I study that information. Um, uh, I, I think it's a really, really important one. I think most people, especially now, are too nice, too sensitive. No one wants to hurt anyone's feelings. Uh, and so it can be refreshing when you ask somebody to be honest with you, right? It's really, really the only way you'll grow. Um, uh, one of, uh, let's see. Oh, man, there's so many. Um, uh, I, I guess the I, book already, right? <laughs> I could just sit here and read it. Someone just asked if there's going to be an audio book. Yes, I, I did. I read the book already. Um, and I read it into the audio book. And so I think that comes out on, on fe February 2nd as well. Um, uh, if you go to the link that Sydney put into the chat here, um, uh, you can have access to, to all of it. Um, uh, let me see here. Which one else do I want to go through? Um, it's just good. The last one, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like the way I live my life. Uh, big money energy code number 16. Every goal needs a picture of success. Visualize what your big success looks like daily. Okay. Now this can mean as simple as a new car. Maybe that means big success to you. Maybe you've always wanted that truck or that Tesla, whatever it might be. Think about it, print it out. Focus on it every day. You can think about what that big success means to you. And maybe it's having a baby. Maybe it's getting married. Maybe it's selling your first million dollar listing. Or maybe it's bigger than that. It could be, you know, starting your own thing. It could be anything. You're writing your own book. Figure out what that looks like. Visualize it. Put it on paper and have it in front of you every single day. And remind yourself 
every day, whether you focus on it a lot or just focus on it a little bit, that getting that, okay, getting that is 100% possible because what you're doing right now is working for yourself in the future that is going to have that thing, whether it's the family you wanted, the house you've always wanted, the listing you wanted, the goal you've always wanted is totally up to you. Um, and if I read you any more codes, I basically am just going to be reading you the book. And I, <laughs> I don't think I'll do that. that. That's okay. We've got more questions for you. And I know um, we'd like to spend the last 10, 15 minutes letting other people ask questions as well. So, because uh, we're not the only ones who are super excited to see you today. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. So, man, where do I even start? Um, one of the things that you talk about a lot is how you structure your day. And I mean, we, I know we all get the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day, but you master that in a way like most people don't. I mean, you, I, I saw you, I think it was on one of your videos on YouTube. You were talking about how you plan your day right down to the 15 minute mark. In fact, we started at 1.15. So what can you tell others how they can plan and structure their day so that they can crush their goals like you have? So I am a creature of habit. I think most of us are. Um, I can't allow myself to just figure out what's going to happen day in and day out. I need to make sure things are actually going to be done. Like, for example, if I didn't work out every day, I would be, I would be very overweight. Um, I, I could eat anything, right? I have a sweet tooth that is a problem for me. So I force myself to work out. It is in my calendar. Um, uh, you know, I have an addictive personality, like a lot of people, I have my vices like everybody. Um, but I realized that, Hey, I, I won't get tired and I won't, and I, and I will only focus on what makes me productive if I make sure that it's scheduled and I can schedule absolutely everything. Um, and it, listen, it's not for everybody, but for me and for a lot of people, it really, really works to get yourself out of a rut and to get yourself into a routine. So in Sell Like Strahan, I talk a lot about finder, keeper, doer and how to break up your day into threes so that you can make sure that you are working for your own company, which is yourself, right? You are your own company. Um, uh, in Big Money Energy, I, I broke it down uh, a lot more. And if you've watched the vlog, you know, I talk about this thing called the thousand minute rule, um, which basically when you break it down, you multiply 60 minutes times 24 hours, you then subtract a good amount of sleep, some time to eat, brush teeth, kiss the kids, all that. And when you're left with it, you're left with about a thousand minutes every day. Okay. You don't just have a nine to five, you have a thousand minutes. So you actually have a lot of minutes, you know, and if you just sit there, I mean, how long do you think you can hold your breath? Like a minute, <laughs> you know, some people can hold it for longer, but a minute can be a long time. There's a lot of things you can actually get done in a minute or 15 minutes. Um, uh, and so if you live your life, especially while you're working, understanding that you're not wasting time, okay, you're spending on that time that's been wasted, you'll really, really start to appreciate every single day that you have and you'll stop wasting time on anything because it's actually costing you money. If you factor in, let's say how much money you want to make this year. Okay. This is my income goal this year. Do the math, divide it out, figure out how much that means you need to make every single week, divide it out, how much that means you need to make every single minute. And then you'll know if you are going to spend 15 minutes doing something in the middle of the day, that might not be the best use of that time. You just spent that amount of money. Maybe it's 10 bucks, maybe it's $50. Like if you attach your time every day to the money you're trying to make, then it is incredibly eye-opening. So I break down my day by the minute and really by the 15 minute mark, because most calls, meetings, everything kind of start on the 15 minute mark for me or at one and one fifteen. And then this is, this is three blocks for me of 15 minutes, right? It's three 15 minuters um, as, you know, as we go through. Um, because it enables me to be as coordinated and scheduled as I can. And I, I, and I schedule everything. I schedule thinking. I schedule, you know, follow-up calls. I schedule eating. You know, I eat out of a bag every day um, to, make, to make sure that I eat because I'm just so busy, right? I have to do that. Um, but there's a big part of the book that, that goes into how to structure your day and how to schedule your life accordingly for 
for what's going to make you happy. I think a lot of people might look at the way I lead my life every single day and say, that's absolutely insane. That's crazy. That's no way to live. And that's totally fine. By all means, feel that way. That's great. But for the, the world that I live in, the pace that I need to move at, this is what works for me. And I think it could work for a lot of other people who want to step up their game, get to that next level, make more money and lead a bigger lifestyle. So other than launching your second book, running a company, because you started your own company last year, essentially running the world, what's next for you in 2021 or even the next couple of years here? Yeah, because you, you talk about planning out to 2030. Yeah, probably just going to throw in the towel, come work for you guys. <laughs> you have such a you have such a machine. Opera. I still think about your office all the time, you know, as I sit with my team and there's, there's things happening all over. I'm like, you know, it's in Houston. I was with Lance and he's got these people and they're sitting in their cars they're waiting for the calls. And there's this operational team and they're, they've got their customer support and this, that, the other. Um, uh, and it's just insane. It's just, it's, you guys are great. Uh, I love your operations so much. Listen, from, I just started my own company um, uh, in September in New York in the middle of a pandemic. Yep. And, um, you know, I plan to have more children. Hopefully I'll move into this house that I've been renovating for three years eventually for the love of all things <laughs> that'll keep me alive. Um, uh, yeah, you, you, you never come to New York city and try to do a renovation. It's like any, something that would take you four months in Texas. Okay. Is going to take you two years in wow. New York bonkers and like 22 times the price. Um, Ryan, I, I remember I used to live there for like 12 years. I I know exactly what it costs. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Totally crazy. And by the um, way, really quickly, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if I told you, but you worked around the corner from my office when you first started in real estate. So we, we might have like Burger Heaven, above Burger Heaven. I was around the corner. Yeah. We might have met. We might have shown <laughs> that an apartment. That's crazy. <laughs> I, you did not tell me that. That's insane. You probably saw me on the street corner, like trying to give out my business cards. Now and you're like, who is this weirdo? <laughs> yeah, you're like, I got to get out of the city. Um, uh, yeah, no, and I listen. My my, I love real estate. I love real estate agents, and I want to build Sirhan to be an agent owned, agent first, agent brand first brokerage company that we are starting in New York because this is where I'm based. Uh, that we will expand and that will grow across the country over the next couple of years. Um, and we'll see how the world reacts to it. But that is, that's my goal for the next five to 10 years is pure unbridled focus, right? Just focus, focus, focus. Awesome. Um, I have one more question and then we're going to open it up because we've got questions pouring in. Sure. Um, so I know you want to make the New York times bestseller list. You've got this book strapped to your hand until it happens. So how many books do we need to help you sell so you can take that book off your hand? Oh man, so many. The competition <laughs> with New York Times is, 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 is steep. It's like the list, right? It's like the Oscars of, of selling books. Um, uh, so as many as possible. I would love you all as much as, uh, as, much as, you're, as, as you're willing to buy. Just keep clicking. Send it to your friends. You know, buy them, send it to other agents, other people you know who might need it. Send it to your local clients. library. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Send awesome. it to your clients all day long. Awesome. Um, I think we have to sell something like 15,000 books or something like that um, to, make the, to make the list, which is, I'll tell you, selling real estate, um, much easier, just to be honest, much easier. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, but I love the book and it's, it's going to be great. I just really want to make that list. And so I taped it to my hands. So guys, look at his face. <laughs> he really wants to make the New York Times bestseller list. Please. Let's help Please. him. <laughs> yes, it would mean the world to me. Um, and I will owe it to all of you. And then, I don't know, we'll do something crazy. If we make that list, I'll figure it out, how to repay everyone who bought the book between now and the time it even comes out, um, which is on Tuesday. Um, and you can also sign up if you go to, uh, uh, um, you know, my, once you buy the book with kind of your promo and get a great deal, you can also come to our virtual, uh, we're having a launch party uh, with Damon John, uh, the shark, the shark, Damon John. So there's gonna be two sharks, 
me and him. He's like he's the real shark. I'm just kind of shark like. We got to meet him, and he's real. He's got a lot of energy as well. Yes, yes, he does. And so we're doing that party on um, uh, on on Tuesday night. Uh, that'll be virtual, obviously, but everyone can come to it. It's kind of cool. Like this whole world now. You know, I used to just have events in New York, and people in New York would come, but now I can have an event in New York, and everybody can come. Um, and you can just you can get a ticket in the it's the the link is in my Instagram bio. If you go there, um, uh, you can get a ticket and we'll also be helping support Feeding America, which is uh, a charity we, uh, we, we, we support as much as we can. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. So we're actually going to allow these people to ask a question to you live. These people. <laughs> yes, we got a lot of them. There, there's like a plethora of questions here. All right. So the first one up, Dylan Moss. Dylan, you're up. Unmute yourself. <laughs> hey, Dylan. Hello. Hey, how's it going? How are you, man? Good. Uh, so I was reading the expert excerpt on your book, and it talks about shooting straight to the top at work. Um, I wanted to ask, what would you say is the biggest or one of the biggest key factors into staying or remaining at the top? So you want to be the role before you are the role. Okay. You don't want to wait on anyone to tell you you're doing your job well. You want to make sure that you're doing it well and that you're doing it for whatever role you're trying to get to. Okay. Now, the top at any firm is, let's say, the owner, the founder. So he just has to keep everything going. But for everybody else underneath that, there's growth, right? There's employment growth. You want to move up. You want to be the lead salesperson. You want to be the, you know, the executive vice president, not just the vice president. So take care of the tasks you need to take care of. Do your job really, really well. Do it faster than they expect of you, right? Check, make sure you are crossing your T's and dotting your I's so that no one ever has to second guess the work you do. They just trust you because it's so good. And then start to do the work that your superiors are doing. Help them out. So that they can look at you and say, well, uh, Dylan, I mean, Dylan's, he's perfect for, for the promotion because he's kind of already doing it and we haven't even been paying him for it. So you're going to be doing more work a little bit for free, but you're going to be showing everybody else around you that you're already capable. So no one's going to even have to guess because you're already there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Good to meet you, man. All right. Uh, next up. Okay, Derek Calda, you are up. Derek. Hang on. I'm apparently not as fast as I talk. <laughs> okay, Derek, you are up. Derek, unmute yourself. <laughs> Oh, he says his mic doesn't work, so I'll ask his question. Okay. How do you fill your own tank and energize yourself? I, I mean, I fill my tank um, uh, with kind of honestly with ideas. Like I get excited all day long about the idea of what I'm going to do next. Um, and that keeps me energized. Right, the idea for a new listing, the idea for this new pitch we're going to go on, the idea for this new job, this new whoop, whoop, sorry, sorry, um, the idea for a new listing, the idea for a new pitch, the idea for a new marketing plan that we're going to do, an idea for a new book, an idea for a new chapter. Like I, I get so excited about these things that I actually write. How am I going to show you this? Um, hold on. I, I have one hand is holding the phone. One hand is holding a book. I'll use my third hand. One second. Like I actually have this list that I carry around with me on a piece of paper, like a lunatic. Um, it's eight pages deep right now of things to think about. It's like Ryan's Ryan's things to think about. Um, and they're all my ideas of, of, of ways that I can keep moving forward, ways I can be more productive, ways that I can grow, ways I can sell more. Um, and that list and those ideas keep me energized. Um, I'll also say that I'm a big fan of emptying your tank um, to keep your energy. 
So I intermittent fast. I talk about it a little bit in the book. It's not, it's not a book about diet. It's you know a book about leading a, a bigger lifestyle. Um, uh, but I, I I eat from twelve to six, and that is it. That's the game. That way, I don't overeat because I for sure will, uh, because I don't trust myself that way. Um, and I make sure that I also eat enough, right? So I only eat from 12 to six, which means that from six until noon the next day, I might get a little hungry, sure, but I make sure that I stay busy so I don't think about it. Uh, and I have never had more clarity. I've never been less foggy. I've never had more energy than, than since I've started intermittent fasting. Like it's just, it's just, a, I think, a, a, a very clean way for me to operate um, because you're much, when you're digesting food, especially a lot of food, especially first thing in the morning, um, you are, uh, you know, you're, you start to get sluggish, right? You're sluggish, you get tired. That's why you start to crash, right? You crash kind of right after lunch, you crash early evening. So I don't ever crash because I'm not, you know, I'm not over digesting. And so both of those things work. Awesome. Um, Isabella had a question. She wanted to know what your new Bravo show is called. Are you allowed to let us know? We'll tune in. I don't think so, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, <laughs> we love you. Uh, yeah, there's, so there's no title yet. Um, uh, it's, it, I want it to be my big fat Greek renovation. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's going to be that though. I think if there's like copyright issues and all that, um, but it's a home renovation show uh, with my wife and I and her entire Greek family as we renovate an 8,000 square foot house in Brooklyn. Um, and they follow the entire process. Um, and it is, it's a lot. It is a lot. We are still filming it because the house is still not done. Every little piece of drama you watch on this show, I think it'll air this summer. Um, uh, every little, like, it's, it was so much worse in real life. Mm -hmm. I just want to put it out there. Um, but yeah, make sure you turn it to that season 10. Uh, when, what season am I on? Season nine of Million Dollar Listing New York, I think premieres Wait. in early May. Uh, finally, we've been filming it for almost two years wow. because we got sh with all the COVID shutdowns. And so it's nuts. Like Zena, my baby will be, like, she's not, she's, uh, she's not even a year old when we started filming. And by the end of the season, she's going to be like well over two. And that's a big age difference for a baby. She goes from like no hair to all hair. <laughs> so it's like, it's going to be pretty nuts. And we also, we did a lot of home footage and crazy stuff. So this season of Million Dollar Listing is going to have, it tracks all of COVID. It tracks the whole shutdown in New York City. It's like things that you did not see on TV. Because um, we're all in it, in the thick of it, in the middle of it. So it'll be, I don't know, it's going to be kind of wild to watch. That's awesome. Well, we'll be looking out for it for sure. Um, all right, we have yeah. another great question here from Jenna. Why did you attach the book to your hand? We know obviously you, you've challenged yourself to get the New York Times bestseller, but how did that idea come up? It was not my idea. Um, <laughs> that is so for sure. It wasn't on that piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, like when I put my mind to something, I gotta do it. Like we've gotta make it, right? We've gotta figure it out. Um, because there's, there's, there's no other option. Like, wh like what am I going to do? Lose, fail like that? That sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> like, if I'm going to get this sold, we're going to get it sold. Um, and selling books is tricky. It's so we sell like Sirhan, you know, it, it sold really, really well. It was great. Um, and I sold it in person. You know, I did a whole book tour for two weeks. You know, we had a big book launch party. I had Luis Ortiz from our listing, you know, with me, we had 500 people at Barnes and Noble. It was crazy. And I toured the country, you know, did presentations, talked to people about the book, got people excited. Uh, and then the book came out and it was, it was great. Now I can't do that. Um, and people are kind of zoomed out a little bit. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people are exhausted. And they said, you know what, instead of just asking people to buy my book, um, uh, because I do think it will really help people. I think it's also very funny. Um, uh, my, my books are never super serious. Uh, they're serious topics, but with a, with a humorous slant to them, um, uh, I figured, you know what, why don't everyone, why doesn't everybody just kind of follow me as I see if I can keep my book attached to my hand for 30 days. Uh, and if you, if you, you know, give me any credit for doing this crazy thing, you can go and pre-order the book if you want to. 
Um, that was really the idea. <laughs> and so I agreed to do it on Sunday, January 10th. And it's still here, whatever it is. What is it? 18, 18 days later, maybe? What is it today? Yeah, that's why That's why it's there. I don't have a better reason other than uh, uh, please pre-order the book so I can make the <laughs> list so I can take this off. I don't know if I can live with this thing attached to my hand forever. That's awesome. Um, all right, Samina wrote, as a pro member advanced level wanted to say i'm excited to see what the training has to offer me super excited to be a part of the slack advanced agent family so thank you you're the best you're the best um i was gonna ask love all our pro members yeah yeah i know they're you you host some really great topics each week uh on your facebook group so amazing content um qu a question i have since you brought this up you know, what, what are going to be some next level advanced courses that are going to be coming out? Obviously you've got a lot on your plate this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the big money energy course is one we want to put together. Um, that we did the social ads course, which is ginormous. It's craziness to me. Um, but it is, it's kind of the, the way to advertise these days. Like, I don't remember the last time I did an ad in a newspaper, um, especially not in New York. Right. So, uh, uh, the social ads course, uh, we put a lot behind that and we put that out and that's been doing really, really well. Um, from there, um, uh, we're going to be doing a course about how to build your personal brand. Um, that will also kind of be attached to how to do PR. So I think that's, that's, that's a big part of our, our, our brand strategy system that we work on with all of our, our pro members. And we talk about in the course, right? It's, it's one, you got to create the content, you got to advertise it, but you also have to know how to shout it from a mountaintop. Um, and how do you actually do that? Uh, and how do you build your personal brand? Um, so that people know to come to you instead of you having to go and knock on everyone's door. Right. Um, and so I think that'll be that for this year. And then slowly, but surely, you know, our sales platform will start to be used, uh, in other industries, right. You know, how to sell almost anything. And we'll start to put out those types of courses um, in the near future. And the best, yeah, the team is cranking away. The best validation is going to be when you are on the New York seller, bestsellers list, you're going to be able to say, see, this is what it took to achieve this. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. Can I tell you a quick little story? You know, you know Dr. Oz? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just did the Dr. Oz show um, and it's pre-taped. And uh, it comes. I think that episode with him airs on either the day the book comes out or the day after. So next week. Um, and I, I walked out and we, cause we did it in person cause I'm in New York. So I got to do it in person. He's been doing you know, all these talk show hosts have been doing these things over zoom. And so I got to show up in person like 19 COVID tests later. Um, <laughs> and it was a whole process and I walked out and I'm sitting with the book attached to my hand. And he's like, what, what is happening right now? What is going on? And I tried to explain it. And he started talking to me about, you know, one of the codes that we actually just went through, right? How to, you know, visualize that big goal, visualize your future. And I told him um, uh, on the show, it's like, you know what? Actually, where were you September 29th, 2015? He's like, I have no idea. Uh, I said, I know where you were. And he was like, that's weird. He's like, no, no, it's fine. Um, you were at the Harboring Hearts Gala. Uh, and I was there. And I was too nervous to come up and say hi to you because you were Dr. Oz and this whole thing. Um, and, you know, Million Dollar Listing had been on the air for like a couple of years, but, you know, it's just reality TV. We don't, we don't ever get to go on shows like yours uh, that are so big. And I made a note to myself on my moleskin where I keep all my like life lists and things that I want to visualize every day. And that day, September 29th, 2015, I wrote down, get on to Dr. Oz's show. And I stood up in front of him and was like, so here I am, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so if you watch the Dr. Oz show next week, you'll see that. And I think his reaction was so like, I have no idea what's happening, but that's great. <laughs> He's so, so taken aback. Putting that well. in my calendar. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah. wrapping this up. One last thing that you want to share with us, obviously, guys, buy the book. Buy all of his books, sign up for the courses. Um, any any last things you want to share with us? So you, you, you both are the best. Um, uh, you've always been big supporters of me and, and I'm huge supporters of you as well. Um, uh, listen, I, I think that all of us 
going into this year, right? It's 2021. January is almost all. It's almost over. Monday is February 1st. Amazing. I think if you're thinking about your goals for this year, if you want this year to be better than last, if you are thinking about the 2020s and how they're going to go by in a blink of an eye. And before we know it, 2030 is going to be here. And you want that extra little push about how to operate in the world today so that you can live a little bit bigger and do a little bit more. That's, that's what big money energy is about, right? That's, that's what it means to create that magnetic lifestyle so that you will attract success. Because maybe right now you're the one who's cold calling, pitching, doing a few referral deals, but you could be doing so much better if you do the work that I, that I tell you to do in Big Money Energy. And even in Salt Lake Star Hands, next year, more people are going to start calling you. And two years from now, because okay, that's, a, that's a good window to have, a two-year window, um, which is what we like. It's one year to plan, second year to execute. In the second year, more people are going to reach out to you than you have time to reach out to them. Your entire business is going to shift uh, if those of you who are watching are, are in sales. Uh, but start off 2021 on the absolute right foot, right? I think the world is going to be in a much better place going forward. People have calmed down. Things are good. Markets are strong. Let's keep it going. But whatever your life goal is out there, it is 100% achievable for you. Just got to put your mind to it and go and get it. And that's what having big money energy is all about. Let's bring back the roaring 20s, right? <laughs> yeah, and then let's not have a 1929 stock market crash, right? Let's That's get right. that one. All right, Ryan, thank you so much for your time, guys. Buy the book, buy it now. It thank comes you. out February 2nd. Buy now and let Ryan take the it off his hand. Thanks, Ryan. All right, go sell, thank sell, you. sell, sell, sell. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.